asked me about two months ago if I'd do this talk, so I put stuff together that's fairly up to date on it. It's, I've been involved in some mapping with a project called Open Street Map, and it became very significant the amount of boundaries that we're adding, which is what got me interested in the boundaries. So if we press on from that, there are 20 different sorts of boundary in the country. Some of them are more used to genealogy than others. And if we go down, we talk about their relevance, talk about where they can be found, show some maps and lists of, about them. And I have a list of links that I hope to show later. And it's up on the wall there beside the screen. It's just to use your camera and take a photo of it when you're going. <laughs> and what the sources were for providing some of the boundary information. And if the Wi-Fi stays working, we'll have a look at quite a number of pages showing some of the old 1930 and 1912 maps and some older ones maybe too. How many, I said there were 20 <coughs> types. There's boundaries, civil parishes, electoral divisions, poor law unions, baronies, registrar, registrar's districts, Superintendent Registrar's Districts, Dispensary Districts, Petty Session Court. Uh, sorry, I've gone a page too far. Have I? Yeah, Petty Session Court areas. The, I'll come in more detail to these, some of these later. Probate Districts, Townships, Metropolitan Police, Rural Sanitary and Liberties. And then the more usual ones that you find in the geography books provinces, counties, <coughs> municipal districts, which in one sense are kind of new since they did away with the UDCs. Cities, local electoral areas, and all in EU constituencies. So we'll start off with the townlands. There are over 60,900 townlands in the country. Some of them are quite, quite small. Uh, one there in Carlo, it's only one and a quarter acres. Tiny. Uh, in fact, that particular one was a monastic settlement from heaven knows how far back. On the other hand, you go into Galway and you get one that's 7,000 acres, which is a colossal area of open country. <coughs> and the townland, I think, originally was supposed to support a certain amount of activity. And certainly some of that open mountain wouldn't support much activity. The townland page I'll show you later has a map page for each of the 60,000 townlands. And we come to that. Some of them, as I say, are as small as Merrion Square. The more average ones are perhaps, if you say, from Fibsborough to, to the Dodder, something of that sort of size. That would be some of the larger ones without going to extremes. So they can be, if you're looking for a graveyard in one, kind of is helpful to know what size it is as to whether there might be one graveyard, two, three. Each townland belongs to a civil parish and in some cases there are townlands adjacent bearing the same name and in that case they are separate townlands because you will find that they are in fact in separate civil parishes and they are separate <coughs> statistical units, separate for all record purposes. Uh, so that if you get a name of one and it's near a town and you think that's it, there may be one beside it in a different civil parish, just as near that town. So you need to be cautious about it. Each townland, again individually, is, belongs to a registrar's district and to a superintendent's registrar's district overseeing typically seven or eight of the registrar's units. Some of them have been amalgamated, particularly around 1900-1910. I found this when we were mapping them, that we ended up that on one map it was shown as one townland, on the other it was shown as two townlands abutting but in separate parishes. And it took me a long time to find out who knew when this happened? I asked in all sorts of libraries and places and everybody sort of shook their head at me. Eventually, I was able to nail it down in the valuation office maps. 
and the records of land. Because I found the Tower Hill in Wexford used to be two separate ones, more or less with a line running east-west across the top of it. And then later it became one single one. And another one there in Wexford, which I'll show you a map of later. I discovered the change eventually, as I say, in the, the books in the valuation office. Uh, I have to pay a compliment to the staff there. for something that had nothing to do with valuations. They were hugely interested and helpful in what I was at. And by going through one of the books for one of the landowners back about 1860 or so, I found how much land he had and kept coming forward and forward that he had land in two separate civil parishes. And then after 1906, he owned a bigger slice of land and at this stage it was all in one civil parish. And they were very helpful. They told me that the little dates are in different colours in the books for the year in which they changed. And I asked them in innocence at the time, does that mean there was sort of a major 1906 was a busy year for that? Well, not really. A lot of them could happen any old year. And they could happen in any old county in any old year. That there, I don't know what gave rise to it, but it, it wasn't going to be easy anyway. The one in Wexford I'll show you on a map where they added a slice of land that was between a river and a road, but in a neighbouring parish, and amalgamated the two together. That's the map of it, and you'll see that the... That's, the blue line is the civil parish boundary, so that everything that side of the blue line was in that town land, and what was between here, that little piece, now a thin piece, was a separate town land of the same name, but in the civil parish nearer to Enniscorthy. And in the later books you will find now that it's a single, they describe town land, and both those pieces are part of the one. So that if you're looking up records for people, you need to be careful. Are the records you're looking at, do they date before <coughs> an amalgamation or after an amalgamation? It's another hazard. You're used to hazards. Let's just say that ones that are adjacent, uh, that could be in separate civil parishes if they have the same name. You want to be careful to look in both of them. Civil parishes. Again, they vary in size. They, oh, I come to how many pieces they can be in. They're recorded since the mid 1600s. Their civil functions were gradually getting withered away, and they hadn't done anything much by the early 1800s. And the Act of 1898 put paid to them as an administrative area. They became only then a church area if there weren't already separate Roman Catholic and Church of Ireland parishes, which then divided or amalgamated or redivided or re-amalgamated or whatever happened to them. They're as small as six acres, a fairly small civil parish, and that's one in the middle of Dublin there, and one in Mayo that's 204,000 acres. It's a fair whack of land to have one civil parish. It's 35,000 times the size of the one in Dublin City, so that they can be of any particular size. I also suddenly learned that civil parishes weren't all single units. They weren't all one piece of land with one boundary around them. And some of them when we were mapping Carlow, I discovered some were two pieces and some were three pieces. Not necessarily adjacent, not some cases bits nearly adjacent, other cases quite a bit apart. And I look at three examples, one of which is Stilorgan. So there's Stilorgan Civil Parish. The names in blue are the townlands making it up. And over here there's a little piece <coughs> of land described as a glebe which, although not connected to the civil parish, is part of it. I don't know, some of you folk would know better than me, was it leave a 
church often land. a piece of church land church between land. to the oh, state. Right. Church land. Yeah. Yeah. Church yeah. land. If you look up the list of townlands in Ireland, there are over 600 of them with the name Glebe in them. They are widespread and easy to come across. The other example I have is the one of Letter Luna, and the place here in, outlined in purple is a civil parish, but down here is a little <coughs> enclave or exclave of it, which belongs to the purple piece at the top. So again, if you are looking for somebody in that parish, you need to remember to look down there. Uh, similarly, the one in blue over here has a separate little piece quite near to it, a bit like Stilorban, which belongs to it but is not touching it. So again, the question is, have you looked in both of them? The one at the top there is the one I showed you a moment ago with the little piece beside it. But be careful. There's another piece of it down near Ross Cray, much further away from it. So, the warning on that is, have you looked in all three pieces if you're looking for the graveyard where the person was buried? And it's quite numerous to get them in at least two. There are maybe eight or ten in Carlow, the second smallest county, which are in two pieces. The district electoral divisions, the sometimes called EDs, sometimes there are later DEDs. In the cities and built-up areas there were wards and the Open Street Map project has Dublin city wards from 1780 mapped on it at various times around the 1850s and on up. The source for the Open Street Map project can use nothing that's copyright. They can't use any Orton survey map, they can't use any Google map, any, anything that's copyright. So that means an Orton survey map has to be at least 50 years old before we can use it. So the only way to discover a lot of the townland boundaries was in this case to rely on the city archive in Pier Street, where if you're very nice and ask nicely, they will let you see the original huge big minute books from the 1840s and 1850s for the City Council of Dublin. And the description for it is a text description, because there's no sign of any maps for them. It says it goes along a street to the junction with, up another street, suppose Nassau Street, up Dawson Street, along Stevens Green, down Merrion Street, along Merrion Square, and you just keep adding all these little pieces together and suddenly you come back up Grafton Street and it connects to Nassau Street again. And when you have a closed loop from the description, then you've got your, your boundary. Uh, much the same for Dunleary here, and that's the wards <coughs> for Dunleary, again by text, relying in some cases by the land belonging or reputed to belong to John Joseph Crossthwaite. So the, You've got to try and find where his <coughs> reputed land was. But it's uh, ends quite interesting reading some of it. The poor law unions were delimited under legislation 1838. They were altered in the 1850s. They were designed to represent what they called physical and human geography. So they would be based around a large town to serve an area that would gravitate towards that town and if they were going to put a workhouse in there it would mean that all the people would have, nobody would have an excessively far distance over anybody else to get to it. A uh, slight yeah, circular sphere of influence. <coughs> it cut, they cut across townlands, they cut across civil parishes, they cut across baronies, they cut across counties. They are a law unto themselves as far as boundaries are concerned. In 1878 they adopted them as being sanitary districts and I suspect but I'm not sure that they then turned into the rural and urban district councils or were involved in setting those boundaries 1898 when so much happened. Suppose somebody comes into you and says their, their great-grandmother or whoever came from Radvili. 
That's grand. We know where they came from. Now all we have to do is look them up in Ratvilly. But is it Ratvilly the village or town? Is it the town land? Is it the parish? Is it the civil parish, the Roman Catholic parish, the Church of Ireland parish? Or is, is it in fact the electoral district? Or maybe even the barony? There's a Ratvilly for each of those and they all overlap and reach out from one another. So you'd want to be sure which Ratvilly you were told about. Just being told Ratvilly Carlo isn't enough. Uh, there's also a dispensary district, the registrar's district called Ratvilly. And if the Wi-Fi holds up, I'll show you that on the map later. I put that up earlier because I, I'd like you all to read it, please, quietly to yourselves. That was how they described what the Metropolitan Police District in 1808 was. And whether you draw a line from the North Circular Road to Sarah Bridges Island Bridge and say that little triangle of the park is inside the city, or whether the wall is coming down to the point of Park Gate Street and along that wall, or whether it's in fact going around the big long wall around the back of the Phoenix Park. It sort of pays your money and you take your choice. And then I kind of think I found the answer. Because that man was a detective and he worked out of Dublin Castle. And there was a murder and two bodies were found in the Phoenix Park. So the question was to find which piece of the park nowadays those bodies were in. It's strange how these two pieces of information came to me, maybe a year and a half apart, and suddenly began to sort of latch on to each other. The baronies, I don't know what that means, but I came across it in the Normans or somebody used to use that in talking about the baronies. Anybody familiar with it? I'm among friends, so. The baronies became more important by the 1700s. They got amalgamated and divided in 1787. I kind of feel some of the barony stuff went on because of marriages and one barony, the family marrying somebody else. The enclaves were largely abolished in 1836, but not all of them. Uh, they then discovered come 1842 there was still chaos in Dublin, which they had to attend to and the functions of the baronies were abolished in 1898 anyway. Now, there's the barony of Nethercross as mapped in 1837. You can see it's in what, six, seven different pieces? Mm -hmm. And uh, which one would you suggest the baron and his relatives were buried in? Where was their headquarters? Home patch. Suggestions, please. London. Hmm? No, the no, it is in no, one in a in way. Middle. No? The bottom. The bottom one, fingless. And in fact, the cross referred to in Nether Cross is in a graveyard in Fingless to this oh. day. Is Nether Cross in Fingless? Yeah. I don't know. But it's apparently the one hmm. spoken about as the one of Nether Cross. So that you can see it's. Knowing somebody lived in a barony, was a servant, worked in a barony, whatever, doesn't tell you a huge lot about them unless you know when it was. There's the modern barony of Coolock, much more comprehensive shape. And in fact, Nethercross is much more singular in shape nowadays. Uh, the baronies for the whole country are on the open street map resource. Registrar's districts. They were not static. In that the boundaries of them were changed from time to time. Uh, for the mapping of the ones that we've done, which is only about 50 of them, we've used the 1885 status. And again, the 
I know in the National Library and other libraries they have a nice map showing the superintendent registrar's districts, but the map is undated. And I don't know what to what date it belongs. There's a splendid document, Townlands and Poor Law Unions by George B. Handrens. And anybody wanting to know which townlands are in which civil parish at that particular time and in which registrar's district and which superintendent's registrar's district, that book has it all. It's an extraordinary work of an extraordinary work to pull together. Um, for, that book is copyright, so we couldn't use it. So instead we used the GRO pamphlets of 1885 that are available in the National Library, anybody who goes in. That's what the pamphlets look like, and you can see where they list the Registrar's District, the ED, the Barony, as well as the Poor Law Union, which is up here, and the Poor Law Union and the Superintendent Registrar's Districts in 1885 were the same as each other. Uh, some of the registrar's districts, the superintendent ones, lost bits of the county where there were two counties previously, and I know Tyrone, part of Tyrone, got removed from one and put into another. So again, just knowing the name of a registrar's district, if you don't know what date it was, you can't be too specific about it. But the list goes down, gives you the district, it tells you what county it was in, what ED it was in, and then what civil parish it was in, and then list the townlands that belong to that. Hugely comprehensive list. Must have taken enormous work to produce it, but it anchors it in time, which is rather helpful. The registrar's districts in Rathdown in County Dublin now, that down, as you know, is half in Dublin, half in Wicklow. So the superintendent registrar's district is in both counties. And this is a map only just of the parts of it in Dublin. I apologise that Dunleary is as yet not divided. At least it is now, but it wasn't when I did that slide. Because I had difficulty finding where the division between Kingstown number one and Kingstown number two was which street it went up, where it turned, which street it went along. I have discovered it since, and it's now live on the open street map. But it was the last piece of the jigsaw there. <coughs> That's a list of the registration districts in Rathdown, <coughs> uh, in Dublin and Wicklow. So they were quite methodical about naming them. They weren't quite as methodical about drawing lines around the areas. Uh, i go back for a moment. The one that's blue there, I'm sorry, this is obviously, <coughs> that's, that's Black Rock 1 and Black Rock 2. That's Dundrum 1, Dundrum and Lane Cullen 1, Dundrum and Lane Cullen 2. This is oh, Bray and Rat, well, Rat Michael and something. And the blue one there. Would you like to suggest what name you would put on that <coughs> little area? Cavani. Dean's Grand. Yeah, Tom, uh, Tony is right. Kalini. But up there is the county council yard with the shelving for GSI <laughs> 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 store in Sandyford. The Beacon Hospital is on the edge of the Kalini Registrar's District. <coughs> so if you come across a record and you know it's in Kalini, don't just assume that they lived and died and had their being in Kalini. I'm sorry to keep bringing up all these hazards for you, but... Cautions. Well, cautions, thank you. The Petty Sessions Districts, why would those be important to a genealogist? Suggestions, please. Cross sessions, names. Yeah. Defendants. And the town housing. In other words, if somebody hailed from County Cavan Way, but happened to be in Kilkenny in a court, at least if you knew the Petty Sessions District, you would know within which piece of Kilkenny they were living at the time. That's the only connection I could think of for it. They are horrible boundaries. They don't even respect townlands in some cases. 
and Ragnar Manor seems to have been a lawless place because they couldn't define one, didn't define one because there was no magistrate available. So I don't know whether they were hauled to one of the other ones or what happened them. What, what period would that have been for Ragnar Manor? Oh, that was in a report of about 1828-1835, thereabouts. Um, <coughs> I've only ever seen a list of details of one county, and that was Kilkenny. And um, I've hunted and I've asked in libraries and all sorts of places, and everybody sort of shakes their head at me. You know, sure. Go away, Brian. No, no. Don't know where that can be. And it was from Ennetland that I got the list for Kilkenny, which enabled us to draw those. So those are all mapped on the open street map. There are about 50 of them so far. No, sorry, the, the, the 50 isn't those, it's registrar districts or 50. Those are the only petty sessions districts that we've had so far access to text for. I have an idea there was somewhere else between Greg and Amanda, besides Greg and Amanda, that was doubtful some way. Other ones that probably, well, the probate one might or might not affect genealogy. The metropolitan police areas shouldn't, or else it's picked up by the courts. Sanitary areas, no. The liberties and the manners is something I'm trying to learn about. Little difficult. Tell you now a little bit about the open street map, because when you've seen some of the slides of it, I think you want to go look more for it. It's a voluntary project. The idea is that the material in it, while it is copyright, as long as you acknowledge the source, you can download a map from it, put it in a book, in a shop window, in an exhibition, wherever you like, but you must acknowledge it. Any of you ever travelled on the Lewis? Mm -hmm. yeah. so the next time you look at one of the Lewis maps, you'll see it's an open street map that it's based on, not Orton Survey, not Google. You'll also notice down in the very bottom right-hand corner of it a little white label, but they belatedly added that it was based on open street map because they had failed to acknowledge it. Dublin City used it where they have overlays for their council offices, libraries, sports facilities, recycling and so on. And having chosen which overlay you want, you then choose do you want the Ordnance Survey base map or do you want open street map as your base map. I mean it has grown hugely in its 14 years, it's having its 14th birthday party next Sunday. And the Dublin party is in the Lesotho Embassy. I'll come to that later. Hmm. Pedestrian ways and steps. It's very much a community-based map. We map the steps. If you look at the metal bridge on the map, you will see that the steps at each end of it are marked as steps. So you know it's not wheelchair friendly. Steps in and out of the parks, particularly up around St. Albans, there's a lot of steps. And altogether there are about four kilometers, if you strung them all together, there's about four kilometers of steps in Dublin have been mapped. There's a separate historic page that I'll show you, it has about 6,000 historical castles, burial grounds, monuments, forts, wing forts, hill forts. No way complete at all at all. The whole map isn't complete yet, a lot of work to go into it. Civic war city wards I've mentioned, the historical civil parishes we've talked about. You can open it up at the map on screen and you can either print to a printer the whole of what's on the screen or you can draw a smaller box on the screen and say I only want to print that little piece. You can also email a link to somebody so that if they click on that link it will open the same map, the same scale uh, with a pointer on it, pointing where you want. Uh, <coughs> historic features on it. The figures in brackets are the national figures, the ones on the left hand side are Dublin. So there's eight baronies in Dublin, 300 nationwide, 84 civil parishes in Dublin. Uh, so you think, oh yeah, but then there's maybe how many graveyards in Dublin? Any suggestions for how many cemeteries, burial grounds, graveyards in Dublin? County and city? 30. In 84 civil parishes. They want their own graveyard, wouldn't they? There's over 160 of them we have mapped so far. 
Um, most of the other 40 that did exist have been demolished, reinterred, <coughs> built upon. But there were touching 200 recorded altogether. I, I was like you, I thought I was maybe 60 when I got involved in it. Um, 1,680 pieces of waterway, that's because rivers like the Poddle have been chopped and put underground in places. And there are nine sets of civil boundaries, city boundaries, shown from 1780 to the present day. And the NLI page I'll show you later. So I said you, you can view and search, and I put this in in case the Wi-Fi wasn't going to work. You can search by name for a town, a city, a street, a townland, a parish, a barony, all a school. A whole lot of them are searchable for you can print out. You can copy a link and I'll show you about viewing the feature details. You can also plan a route on it. I have open street map on my phone of Ireland and the British Isles, well, all of the British Isles, and I can search for a street or a town anywhere in and ask it to plan my route from where I am. And like a sat nav, will do it for me. And then I say I want to go there and it'll speak the instructions to me because it's using OpenStreetMap, it's updated maybe about once a month, and it costs nothing, because OpenStreetMap's for sharing, which is why I still contribute to it. The, this has nothing to do with genealogy, but I think it deserves a mention. The time of the reuse aerial imagery, very carefully, on no account can we use Google. That's paying a debt, it's so highly copyrighted. The Orton survey stuff on their web page is highly copyrighted. We are used to be licensed to use some old Yahoo imagery, which wasn't great six or eight years ago, but you could draw a country road from it. And more recently we're licensed to use the Bean aerial imagery. OpenStreetMap exists in something more than 180 countries in the world, the same recipe, I don't know how many. But it means there's a lot of people used to interpreting aerial imagery and drawing lines to make a map. And when the earthquake happened in Haiti, and then later the typhoon, is it typhoons they have in the Philippines? Mm -hmm. At the right thing? Uh, word went out from the, in Haiti by the International Red Cross, if we were let use newer imagery, could we add to the map? So the answer was obviously yes, because we were able to map which roads had been removed by the earthquake, which didn't exist, which weren't like thoroughfares anymore, where there were landslides, all sorts of things. It had the great advantage that the people on the ground, as they reopened a road, they could restore it on the map very quickly. So that was Haiti. And the Philippines had about five days' notice, and word went out to please map it before the typhoon came, and then map it again after see what had changed. The Soto Fingold County Council were out doing some consultancy work out there on water drainage, that kind of stuff. And there were no maps showing a whole lot of the unofficial settlements and how to know where to put the sewage and the electricity and the water became a problem. The government wasn't keen to add all these settlements to their maps. And it happens one of the guys from Fingold had been mapping for open street map. He suggested they use it, taught them how to use it, came back, and Fingal hosted two sessions in the council chamber in Fingal in Swords. About 50 people, their own staff, open street map volunteers, people from Concern, uh, students from two of the schools from the transition year who had been taught how to do it. And they spent from 10 to 4 one Friday mapping the Soto. And it's called the Humanitarian Open Street Map Team. It's used hugely in Africa since the Haiti thing. Medicines on Frontier, the Red Cross, the Red Crescent, the earthquake in Nepal, the word goes out, please, map. And Digital Globe, I think it is, are the people who have made imagery available very promptly for Open Street Map to use for that, which I think is a great use for it. The biggest use of all was the Ebola outbreak. And in that case, Medicines and Frontiers <coughs> put an urgent request, we need buildings mapped in Guinea. 
if you're going to control an outbreak or assess it, you need to know where the buildings are. And, okay, they put it urgent, all right, but in 20 hours there were 100,000 buildings added to the map of this up of Bini. People who could be in Brazil, Russia, Japan, Lonnie anywhere, got on their computers and started mapping. There was a very organised way, they put a grid on it, and you choose a little square in the grid and lock it. I'm editing that square, and nobody else will come near it while you're on it, and then you release it when you're finished. But to me, that far more important than town hats. I think it's tremendous use for it. So that's the end of the, the learning process in a way. I'll now start to show you some web pages on it, if I can cope with this machine. This map, all those grey lines on the map are townland boundaries, all 60,000 of them, and you can switch them on and off at will. You can drag the map, you can zoom in on the map. So I can switch them back on there. Take a moment to... So there are the townlands in South Dublin all outlined, and the entire country is done with those. Uh, partly done by, 10% of it done from old OS maps that were more than 50 years old, 90% of it done by courtesy of the British War Office, who issued maps of Ireland in 1939 with the townlands on them. We're not going to go into politics here tonight. But Trinity College had scans of those 675 sheets which they made available to us. We did some technical work on them so that when they got the files back, a student opened one, would open on top of Orton Survey, on top of Google, on top of whatever you want, at the right scale and the right place. That's what Trinity got. What we got was the ability to have access to 60,000 townland boundaries. If you're interested in civil parishes, Those here are civil parish boundaries. So that you can, I don't have one in that where there's two named adjacently. But what's interesting on that, one thing is, oh, I've learned all sorts of bits of things. I learned that Rathmines, Milltown Golf Club is in Rathmines. The Rathmines town land. I've always regarded it couldn't possibly have come south of the daughter. I mean, no way would people south of the daughter agree to that. Uh, you can also switch on the baronies. Obviously, it gets confusing if you switch too much stuff on at once. Uh, let's switch off the townlands for the moment and the civil parishes. I told you I would try and show you another cross. There's Coolock. There's the boundary between Coolock and Nethercross. I believe, yeah, barony of Nethercross is now a single one piece. But when I say is now, since about 1842 or something, they redid it. Um, also, what else, the EDs are on it, sorry, it's the MDs are what they use to replace the, the councils. Like Carlo now has three MDs because Tullow became one area and instead of having a UDC, this kind of thing. So those are on it, I think, for most of the countries. The baronies, the 40 vice counties of Ireland are on it as well. Uh, I'm not going to show on that piece. Uh, again, Guy from Mead, who's in the University of England, found the text for those. He said, well, even if you can map it, why don't you? So he sat down and, yeah, you can see the beginning come up there in red. There were 40 of them all together. The country was divided into those 40 about 1904. The counties and the provinces, the other obvious ones, local electoral areas, that's your counties, Dáil areas and local electoral areas are all the 1986, 2003, 2013 boundaries. <coughs> the next page is very similar to it in one respect that those are the 675 British Border Office maps. 
and somebody in OpenStreetMap had the persistence to stitch them together, the images. But the whole country is covered by them. The site is ho oh. that site is hosted in Waterford Forest by somebody. It's not on the main OpenStreetMap page, and it's hosted for us free gratis and for nothing. Sorry, I can't go in further on that here. But you can go in. Those are the 1912 six inch maps in most cases. Uh, I can switch those fellas off. Also on that page, there are the another series of British War Office maps two or three years later in colour. And I don't know if you can see down here, National Library of Scotland made the scans available to us for those. We did the same technical stuff on them, gave him back so he could use them better. And we got permission to put them on our web page. That's that one, the, Barth the local, if you like, local Bartholomew map. I don't know how well I can zoom in on that. It's also there from 1940. There's the main open street map page. But I didn't show you. On the previous one, you can also have the place names in Irish on it, in the choice of Irish <coughs> or English. All right. uh, and the one that I like the most, because I really think it's beautiful, oh, oh dear, has, it'll just have to bear with me, every civil parish coloured differently to its neighbours, and all the barony boundaries outlined in red. That was done by people in New York about 1904-1906. The scans of it, you can see here they're in the James Hardiman Library in Galway. And we gave them some maps and they let us use those maps. To draw the parishes with, but to be very careful, because there are 19 parishes in the wrong place. No, oh, 19 townlands in the wrong civil parish, down around Kilrush and Carnew. So it's not absolute. Considering they did it from New York, maybe they did a very good job. But you wouldn't want to take it for, as being gospel. But it is a very beautiful map. And a few bits of white got in on it. Because we got that given to us as 32 separate maps. And I don't know how many of them it took, but they went round the edges of them in Photoshop with the scissors, drawing the edges of the county so they would nestle together and could be made one huge map. But again, Galway was delighted as we were to, to get that. You have the normal counties, baronies, civil parishes as well. I don't know, Seamus. I just know. We heard Galway had them available and I was down there at the bowling way. <coughs> Where would you got the information from in 1904? Maybe from George Handron's book. Hmm? George Handron's book listing the no, townlands uh, in the uh, parishes. Uh, mm. But you mentioned the... the oh, not his book, but the pamphlets of 1885. Mm. Maybe. Or a census index of 1871. Because you've got two separate county maps. They don't actually fit together, as you know. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Orleans, the county twists, as we call it. And it, maybe that, is that what's showing up in the white bits? No, the white, I think, is where the scissors slipped a bit. Oh. Well, the Photoshop scissors, as he was doing that on them. The quickly, just to go through, how am I doing for time, Tony? You're fine from another 10 minutes, Another 10 minutes, OK, thank you. <coughs> this is OpenStreetMap itself. and. I told you you can search for a, I don't know if I can see this now here, but we try. Uh, suppose I want to search for Taney. Oh, more is that? I should have said Taney. Oh, no, there's Taney, Civil Parish. There's the Civil Parish of Taney. And you can do the same for any of the 60,000 townlands. For what? I can't remember how many civil parishes. Wouldn't that be very useful on the on the Catholic parish register for the National Library? No. Your they don't match. 
Or if we could do it. Yeah, I mean, that would improve that uh, website immensely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anybody know a source of the boundaries of the Catholic parishes at any particular date? Uh, the, 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 each, each diocese would have his own mass. The people who They're did, a little shy. The, the, the people who did them, um, the National Library registers, put yeah. up a map, as you know. Uh, if you could source that map and work their information. I mean, I've been, I've been talking to them in Carlo mm. about this, and mm. the lady is now, I rang again today, on <coughs> holidays at this mm -hmm. stage. They have a spreadsheet at right. one stage that's not in the local library, but it's in the college, not in the bishop's house or something, and they know about some of these. And I have asked for permission to use the, that and to date it for whatever date mm -hmm. the spreadsheet was. It could be different today, it's an occupational hazard, but it's uh, difficult to get that information. I know Kira in the National Library asked me that question four years ago. Yeah. Could we put the Catholic parishes on that, please? Yeah, I, think, John, I think John Brennan has done some work on Catholic parishes recently. Mm -hmm. There's something about you on the blog. Okay. There was some combination of somebody in Cork and Minute, the University of Minute, having access to a lot of maps for it. But I believe the prime mover in Minute moved to somewhere else into different responsibilities. They don't know what's, what's happening on it. You can also put in there, uh, I told you you could search for the name of a place. You can also search for pharmacy and from. Uh, you so it will give you a list of pharmacies. And if you move it and it's on the map, it'll come up with a pointer. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Click on it, you can find it there, the one on Windy Arbor. So that there's a huge amount that you can search for that way. You can search, coming back to history a bit, or genealogy. Um, Daniel O'Connor, give you a good example. Uh, so there's a monument to him, a place called O'Connell Street, <laughs> and there's one in New Hampshire, and there's something else in Australia. It is settled for the Dublin one. That's grand. Now, I suppose, hands up those who know where he's buried. Oh, no. <laughs> that's all right. Dead centre. <laughs> yep. Well, I suppose we don't know that. Very well. Apologies for my typing. Oh, I didn't. Well, what I did. I was expecting it to find it for me there because it's mapped in as never, and normally it would find it if I typed it in. Maybe it needs capital letters on it. Well, you have two L's in Daniel. Mm. Yeah, Daniel, uh, that's a trick on it, it should say. It should autocorrect, I think. Uh, yay! There you are. <laughs> And, as I say, there are about 150 of the graveyards in County Dublin all mapped by name on that. Yeah. Nearly out of time, I'm yeah. um, I'll very quickly show you the townland, so just show you one townland on it. Suppose we... You can put in the name of a townland or parish up there at the top. You can pick a particular county, and this will list all the baronies, the civil parishes, electoral divisions, and the townlands. And if you go into a particular uh, district there, it will tell you, it will list the townlands that are in it. And the most important thing of this is, sorry, I need to go into one townland. Uh, it tells you the area, it tells you at the top all what's in it, which parish it's in. You go on down, and in case your person's grandmother was buried, to the east of the town line, because that's where the church or the graveyard was that they went to. It lists the ones that border it, and more importantly, you can then look up the 1901 census for that town line. You've done, you've done that link, have you? Hmm? You've done that link for all of them? Yeah, the whole 60,000 of them are there. 
and also to Griffiths in some cases. Yeah. The spellings are different, don't always match between Griffiths and what the OS used. Kind of useful. Yeah, very. A lot of genealogists. Oh, no. I still get clapped on the back sometimes. I was only one piece of a cargo. How did you get involved? Hmm? How did you get involved? Because my son came home and said, didn't you say your dad at work, somebody said to me, isn't your dad into maps? I'm an orienteer. That's how I got in. Well, I've had, I got my first license from the Orton Survey, I think, when I was 18, to copy a map in the National Library. So maps have always interested me, but I never worked at maps. And then the guy who started this came over 10 years ago gave a talk on Thursday and then a whole lot of us went on a mapping party with anti GPS units that he brought the following Saturday, Sunday. And then grew from that. Don't know, is it an addiction or an obsession? It's either <laughs> one or the other. Sorry, Brian, where in that can you look for, you know, historical things like old forts and castles? Uh, just there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but again, you can do that then by townland. No, no, no. This is these are marked as individual units on a separate map altogether. And if you click on one of those, it will come up and tell you what it is it's representing. Have I to really stop? No, go on for another minute. Another minute. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the last one to show you is I showed you some of the old maps, but in this case, we are working at putting the just for County Dublin, the 1937 maps, um, that you can compare them to Open Street Map. And if I go in on the city centre the, and go to look at 1780, Poodle and Cash, and then go back to that. Well, that's fantastic. Oh, really? yeah. What, that's the 19... 1780. 1780. But as well, good buddy, the historian mapper fellow that introduced me to the image for that. And that's I got the image that's itself. Hmm? That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, other ones on it, there's 1850 Dublin and Burns, Dublin City, Municipal Boundary Commission, Tram Routes, the Dublin Civic Survey. It's a mix and gather of all sorts of pages. That's it then. Right.